Welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poo Harding, and we have a very special guest tonight. We going to Queens tonight. Springfield Gardens great and the third leading scorer in Queens College history. So that makes him a Queens College legend. Let's give it up for the assistant coach of Kansas University, Coach Norm Roberts. Let's do it. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out, out into, into the world, the world of, of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Ah, what's going on? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. It's about 95 degrees here, so I'm sweating my butt off. <laughs> Listen, I got my, my rag here too, man, so it's out up here in New York. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, before before we start the show, I want to say that this program is sponsored by Styles by Nita and Unique Creations. Welcome, Coach Norm Roberts. Thanks. I feel welcome. Talk about the past. Oh, man. <laughs> That's right, man. Listen, once I heard that you was on that Springfield Gardens team, it kind of blew my mind. I was like, wow, this is this is awesome. You know, I can get a, a more in-depth look on how that team was. I heard about them, especially uh, Richie Radar Anderson and Anthony Mason, who I got to play against later on in West Wall. Right? So, yes. So what we like to ask everyone who come on the show is who introduced who introduced you to the game? Uh, my dad introduced me to the game, and uh, you know, growing up back in the eighties and seventies and that stuff, that's all we did was play ball. If you wasn't playing basketball, you was playing football. You was playing baseball. You was doing something. Your family never had to worry about where you was because you was in the park. And you was playing, and the only time you came home was coming home to eat dinner. That be That's right. It, and then you go back out. So, you know, we didn't have cell phones and all that stuff. If you wanted to call home, you had to find a pay phone that worked. And you also had to have some change in your pocket in order to make that call. So That's right. That's right. That's right. It, it was 15 cents at one time when I was a kid, then I went to a quarter, right? So <laughs> if you had a quarter in your pocket, you was good. It was 10 cents for me, fam. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> Look at that. So who was your first coach coming up? Uh, my first coach was, was uh, you know, obviously guys in the neighborhood, you know, because back then you didn't have the AAU they got now. The AAU mm. now was awesome. You know, there's a lot of players that got passed on. If there was AAU like it is now, a lot of guys would have won even higher and did some other things. But but uh, I, I got coached by guys in the neighborhood. It could have been, you know, you know just, just different guys. Could have been Kevin. You know, I'm, I'm just saying names. But, you know, whoever was the oldest guy in the neighborhood, he put some young fellows together. I grew up in Montebello Park, you know, which is a legendary park in New York. Definitely. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, Bello. 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 Got a Queens guy right here. He knows. He's a Queens guy. Bello. That's our resident artist. He went to Jackson. <laughs> And, and how you doing, man? And, and 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 the thing that was crazy about that, they used to have citywide, Elmcore, yeah. all those programs used to run out of the Bella. So yeah. you would play against guys from everywhere, from Brooklyn, Manhattan, whatever. They all come to park. So they would start bitty ball in the morning. So that would start at like 8 o'clock. And then it go all the way to seniors playing at 4 yeah. or 5. So wow. you play your game. And then you sit there and you watch the other fellas coming up playing. It, it was pretty cool. Wow. Rick Holmes said that's where he actually met you at, at Montebello. Yep, yep. I, I, I used to go to Bello Day and all that stuff. That's the spot. So who was the best player in your neighborhood at that time? Oh, 
guys. There was a lot of guys. And, and when you call a neighborhood, you know, we call like all, all of all of South Jamaica was kind of a neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. back then you had guys like I looked up to guys like Gary Cooper. He was a bad boy that played at, at, at Springfield. Uh, Kenny Patterson, you know, uh, uh, you know, those guys, uh, Peanut, there was, you know, um, God, what was his name out of Rochdale? I can't remember his name right now. Uh, man, oh, I can't remember his name. But but there was so many players, you know, and, and back then, you know, you gave all those guys respect because you were trying to be like them. And right. Was, you would sit out there all day just to watch those guys, Howard Ringer, all those guys. They was older than me. Fred Burton was a little bit older than me. And that's up kind of at the same time as me. You know, but all those guys, because then you'd end up playing against them in high school. Yes. And that's up. So, you know, when, one of the biggest guys when I was growing up was Wendell Owens. Mm. Wendell Owens was a bad man. I mean, he, I mean, he was getting 40. He's the first guy that wore his shorts hanging off because he was all skinny and he could wear them hanging off and playing. Wendell Owens was a bad boy. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Coach Ron Phelps said, said, what's up? Oh, tell him I said, what's up? That's my man. Yeah, he's in the building. Um, Rick wanted to ask, you get a good question, Rick said, ask him who is the better shooter, Radar or Silk from Lincoln? Woo! Great, Great question. question. I'm a Lincoln guy. I'm a Lincoln guy. Bring the phone down some, Coach. Bring the phone down a little bit. Okay. Set there you go. There you go. I know Silk real well. Silk's my man. But Radar? Radar was ridiculous now. Radar? Radar was so bad that back then, you know, you got to remember now, there was no three-point line. Right. And Radar, he ain't like layups now. He was shooting 25-footers and that type of stuff. So, now he's a bad man. Ray, Ray, wow. I, I, have to get, I, I think Silk can shoot. He can really shoot. But Silk could also take it to the whole sum, you know? Yes. Yeah. Hey, it was lights out. I, I watched him get 35, 40. Yeah, he, he can mm. really get shoot. Really, really wow. shoot. Wow. Nothing like seeing it close up, right? Yep, yep. I actually caught the radar last week. You know, he's really? He, he, yeah, he's living in, in Atlanta, and he's he's doing well. He called me because, you know, not to be morbid, my, my dad passed away, and he called Rest me with condolences and stuff, and and, uh, and we talked for a long while. He's doing good. He just my condolences, my condolences to your dad. Yes. Thanks, I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah, please. That that's that's one of the contributions we like for people who come on to kind of ask someone else to come on to the show. But we'll get to, to that at the end. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll definitely do that. All right. So was Springfield your zone school? Yes. Yeah. Back in those days, that's what you did. You didn't go. I almost went to Christ the King. Christ the King. As he was trying to get me to come play football because football was my first kind of my first deal. And okay. He didn't want me to come there to play football, and then I played on a, a a little traveling team that played in Long Island City, and I almost went to Marta Christie. Playing against Rob 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 and those guys from from up there at uh, Queensbridge. So those were the two private schools I almost went to. But in the end, my whole family went to spring for guards. So, you know, you always wanted to go to the guard. Yeah, uh, Vern Fleming went there, right? Vern Fleming yes. and uh-huh. somebody else. Yeah, I, I just posted it today with yeah, the Montague. Yeah. yeah. Vern went there, Tiny went there. They had to have some dudes. And back in my day, they had the Greer brothers. The Greer brothers went there. They were really good players. Okay. Tell me a little bit something about your brother Marty. I heard he was a good ball player. He was. Marty, Marty could really, really shoot. Marty was actually, should have played Division I. Uh, he hurt his knee. And when he hurt his knee, he never got it back to where he you know, should have gotten it. But he was on that team with Mason the next year that actually had more talent than we did and kind of started Springfield on its rise, you know, as far as winning quite a bit. And and uh, Marty and them, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think they ended up losing to Truman with Strickland. Strickland then beat them that next year. 
and that stuff and, and, and got them out of the playoffs. What was that, uh, 83, 84? That was 84. That was yeah, that was, my first, that, was, that was my freshman year because we lost to boys and girls that year. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. our championship year, I, I believe it was 82, 83. I think it was 82. 80, 81, 82, because I spoke to uh, Coach Ray Haskins who said hello. All right? Oh, yeah. Coach Lee Haskins, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. He said hello, and he said, uh, you guys is tough. You guys beat them in the city championship. We did. Hey, Ray Haskins, unbelievable person and coach. I remember Ray Haskins when they had Ice Reynolds in those guys. Yes. And they came to scrimmage us at Springfield Gardens. I was a sophomore on the team. I want to get no burn. Kenny Fiedler was our coach. And he's, he's telling us, because Kenny Fiedler, the great thing about him is he would have us scrimmage or play non-league against the toughest schools in the city and the toughest places to play. So, like, we would play a, a non-conference game. We'd go to South Shore. We'd go to Tilden. We would go to play. And he'd be like, nah, get your butts on the bus. And, you know, of course, he'd get his car and leave, and we'd have to run to the bus after the game if we won. Right, but right. He made us play in those tough environments. We played Alexander Hamilton, and Ray Haskins had, like, I swear to you, they had, like, 30 guys on their team. Yes, yes, so yes. Scrimmaging. And these dudes are laying it up. So as they're laying it up, you know, I'm standing there, and we're shooting around, and I said to myself, you know, just thinking as a player, you know, guys are talking. I said, man, I hope when I get in, it ain't against Ice Reynolds and, and, <laughs> and, and Scurria. And that's how like, them dudes is real good. I said, I hope I go up against the fat kid. The fat kid. <laughs> and, and the fat kid was Beetle, Beetle Washington. Wow. <laughs> and, I'm, and so all of a sudden when they start the game, the fat kid is starting. And I'm going, oh, <laughs> dude start. and he was a bad man. He was trusting. Yes. He was so good, man. He could run that team. And I remember because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Eddie Davender was a freshman. No, he, yeah, he was a freshman because I was, yeah. he yes. was a freshman on that team. So he wasn't getting no burn. Gerald Green was there. He wasn't getting no burn. You know, those guys, they was watching them other cats. And that's a, but they had an unbelievable team. Ridiculous. That's crazy. Because as soon as you mentioned Ed Davida, my guy Ross was going to ask me to ask you about Ed Davida. Guess who was the ball boy on that team? Who? Lloyd Daniels. No way, really? Yes. Wow. Hey, Eddie Davida was one of, I'm just telling you, he was one of the smoothest playing dudes of all time. Like, mm -hmm. he, would, he would talk under his breast, and he had a high voice and shit, but he was smooth as shit, and he would kick your behind. I mean, he can make mid-range jumpers, yes. jumpers, floaters. I mean, he, he, was, he was a bad man. He, he wow. was a bad man. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie was a really good player. He was a good player. Who was your toughest competition in the city? Um, well, that year we played against, uh, I remember we played against Brandeis. Brandeis High School. And they had Bobby Jones in there. And Robbie yes. and those guys. And they, they, they had a really good team. They, they actually beat us. I think we beat them once and they beat us once in a tournament. Remember, they used to have that big tournament up at CCNY at, 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 at Thanksgiving time or something. We, we were playing that. Uh, in Queens, the team that everybody wanted to beat was was Andrew Jackson. <laughs> and Andrew Jackson. Look, look, he's happy. He's happy about that. I know Greg is watching. You know, <laughs> they had everybody. You know, they they they, they had that all the Edwards brothers played there. Bones, yeah. You know, all of them played there. And then they had Boo Harvey. Then they had Tree Carnegie. Then they had um, what's my man's name? Oh my God, could rip Doug Harris. And yes, yes. And, and, and Springfield, the year that we won the championship, we beat them. And mm. Springfield 
never, had never, like in the last 10 or 15 years leading up to that, had not beaten, beaten Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson, we would play them almost every other year in the playoffs. We'd play them in like the quarterfinals, and they would beat us. And that's us. Uh, so the year that we won it, we played them in, it was like the semis of Queens. I think it was the semis. Semis of Queens. And we played them in an unbelievable game, one of the best games ever at Hillcrest High School. We played mm. And it was, it's probably one of the most proud moments I've ever had in basketball, playing. Because they had Boo Harvey, they had Edwards, they had Doug Harris, they had Tree Carnegie, and they had somebody, and they had one other guy. But they were really good, and they were like 31 and 1. And, that's a, and we played them, and we ended up beating them. I, I, I don't think it was in overtime, but we ended up beating them like 85-83. It was wow. a ridiculous game. And our coach was a guy named Kenny Fever. And what made it cool is the week before we played Jackson, and Chuck Granby was a great coach at Jackson. Chuck was. And, yes. And, and, and the week before we played him, he said, uh, Kenny Fever said, we're going to surprise them. He said, this is what we're going to do. And what he did was he knew that me and Radar and, and kind of all of us on the team, we grew up playing against Boo, playing against Doug. You know, we all grew up together. And he, you know, he did one of those things the same to us. Aren't you sick of everybody talking about them? They don't ever talk about you Why are you ignoring Boo younger than you? Boo better than me, but Boo younger than you. You telling me you can't I bust the Boo and all this stuff. And so what he did was to start the game off, and Jackson hadn't had anybody do this. To start the game off, we pressed them. Wow. We pressed them. And Shot. we were up on it, and we were just, I mean, playing like wild maniacs against it, and it kind of caught them off guard, and we got into them. And I remember Fever telling us, now you can't do this stuff now. He told our center, a kid named Terry Keys, he was a 6'6 six, six moving kid, big TTs, and he was a mean sucker. And he told Terry, he said, Tree Carnegie is a great player. He said, what I want you to do is the first play of the game that there's a loose ball rebound with you and him. I want you to knock him on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a loose ball. They're both grabbing for it. And Harry drilled him into the ground. And our whole team was like, let's go. Let's go. Wow. And it was, great. it was a great game back and forth. And we, end, we ended up winning uh, the game. And I remember as a team, our kids, all the kids on the team, they had a little locker room downstairs. And we all ran down there. And I remember as a kid, I was so happy. And I just kept screaming, we won, we won, that I actually got so out of breath, I like couldn't talk. I was just like, we won, we won. I'm like, God, we won. It was unbelievable. So any other game, we won a couple more games and won the city championship. But nothing topped that game. No. Yeah. Wow. That, that was the ultimate game for us. Wow. Because you were some cocky bastards? Yeah. Because he's. But, well, listen. That, 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 that Thanksgiving that tournament. Game. That Thanksgiving tournament was the Doc Turner tournament. The yes. Doc Turner yes. Classic. Yeah. Good yes. looking out, Pat. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. He, Jamal was saying the reason why I probably felt like that because he said they were cocky and they walked like that. Okay, but but they, but they should have. Now, they were some bad boys now. They was good. and But what our coach tried to do with us, which was good, he just said, hey, man, they got two arms, two legs just like you, man. <laughs> well, well, That's well, right. Why are you making them guys into some superstars? And for that moment in time, we were able to win the, able to win the game. You know, and that stuff. What year was that for you? That was, asking to say, hey, hey, we all get no offense. Uh, 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 that was 83 for me. That was 83. That was our championship year. I think Ray Right, the 82, 83. It had to be the 82, 83 year. 
right? Yeah. The year started off 82, but, you know, when you get to the end of the year, it's 82. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's, that's when we won it. And I remember because after we beat them, we played Far Rockaway, like, for the Queens Championship. Far Rockaway upset somebody on the other side, and we played them at St. John's. And, and, and we beat them in the game there, and then we had to play Stevenson. And Stevenson had Dedrick Irvin, Ooh. Kyrie's dad, and they had uh, Brent, I think it's Brent Williams. And Brent Williams had a bald head. I mean, he was light-skinned and bald and wore a headband. Looked like Slick Watts from back in the day. Right, right, right. And that's what we used to say. Yo, they got this dude Slick Watts on their team. But he was a really <laughs> good boy. And they had a kid named Kaim Long. Yeah, that big kid, Kaim Long. And we played them in the semis and beat them for the city. And then, we, and then uh, uh, Eddie Davender and, and Alexander Hamilton upset. Elmer Anderson and Pearl Washington. Because we thought we were going to play Elmer and Pearl. And and, and they upset him with Andre Kittler. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was Andre Kittler, uh, uh, Eddie Davender, and then... Uh, yeah, Greg Jones as well. Greg Jones. Yes. Mike, Mike yes. Irvin. Mike yes, Irvin. yeah, Mike Irvin, yes, yes. Who's going to be on the show soon. And I remember they upset Pearl and them. And they beat Pearl, and that's when we played them in the, in the city championship. Yeah. I think for that way. I skipped yeah. Pearl. Now, Pearl was, no. in our era, Pearl was the baddest man. Now, now I was telling you, Queens dudes, Pearl was a bad man. Like, like forget it. He was stronger than everybody. He was, you no, know, and he was as quick as anybody. I mean, knew the game. He was ridiculous. He was ridiculous. He played forward on defense and then played point guard on offense. Yeah, right? they kind of, I think they kind of played a little bit of zone back then. Yeah, they, yeah, they did. They did. I remember. And he yeah. played. He played the forward position. Yeah. Yeah, but they and then Elma. Elma was another guy that could really shoot. Elma. Could yeah. Real, Elma Anderson could really, really shoot and was tough and was real tough. Yeah, Paul Brown had a lot of talent come through there, man. Yeah. Jordan he's Diaz, and he can never too. pull up the big one. He can never pull up the big one. He's a good man, yeah. too. He's good coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, good definitely, coach. definitely. He gave my shot um, on the Empire State team with that 80, 87, 88. Uh -huh. um, Boo Harvey, Ross Strickland, Derek Chivas was my roommate. Uh -huh. I had Dow Middleton, Dow Middleton, yeah. Eric Johnson, Vinnie Johnson brother. Yep. Dwayne Martin was on that team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I'll give you another one. Prime Minister Pete Knight from Third Base is on that team as well. <laughs> and, and I went out to the tryouts, and I did very well. But I didn't think I was going to make it. I saw the people that was going to be on that team. Eric Brown was on that team as well from yeah. Miami. Mm -hmm. I was like, Paul Brown called me like 6 o'clock in the morning, like, we are on the bus waiting for you. <laughs> That's true. Cool. That's good. And so I, I, I'll never forgive him for that. So you say you didn't play AAU because AAU wasn't around during the time. No, that, back then you had Citywide and Encore. That was like AAU. That was like AAU. So I, I, you, it seemed like you had a pretty decent high school career. You know, you guys wanted and you guys set the foundation for what was to come later on, right? Like, like the year that we won it, the year that we won it, was kind of kind of different in that we actually didn't have a great year. We had an okay year, and and we were right on a bubble, like 12 and 8. We were right on a bubble of making the playoffs. We had to win. We had to win a big game against – we lost a bad game against Van Buren that we shouldn't have lost. And we ended up losing the game where we were down one. You know, you're taking the ball out on the side. Radar was supposed to throw it to me, and obviously I was supposed to give it back to him and get the hell out of the way. Well, I, I kind of went left. He threw it right, and we lost. And, wow. And it was amazing because it helped our team up. Because in the locker room, me and Radar got into it. And he kind of was like, yo, man, you screwed your game up. And then I got pissed. I said, man, you should have thrown it here. 
and we kind of got into it, but it actually kind of brought us together as a team more. And then we had to beat Francis Lewis, Fred Burton, and those guys at home with Mike Brown. Fred Burton and Mike Brown were the two best players on that team. And we had to beat them uh, at home to make the playoffs on the last day. And, and we ended up beating them to get into the playoffs. Wow. So we, because back in those days, you had to go all the way through Queens. Then you played, you know, a Bronx or Manhattan. Then you yeah. played, you, know, you had to win, you literally had to win eight games. Right, to get all right. The you know what I'm saying? So you really had to win some games to get there. That's why I always think the city championship is far harder to win in New York City than anywhere else if yes. the way it was back in the day. And it was harder to win the city championship than to win the state. You know, because in the Very state, we lost in, we lost in the championship game of the state. We beat St. Anthony's in the semis. We beat them. And then and then we played uh, North Babylon. North Babylon had Russell Pierre and they had uh, Derek Brown, who went to Syracuse and Russell Pierre went to North Carolina State. They yes. were so, Mike Boswell went to uh, Colgate and they were just so much bigger than us. And, that, and they ended up beating us in a good game in the state championship. Okay, okay. So who was recruiting you outside of Queens College? I had a, a – probably where I did get mad at my coach. See, back in those days, it, it's not like the recruiting is now. I actually had – NYU was just starting their program back up. They wow. were recruit me until they saw my grades, and then I was out, which is my <laughs> own fault. So, so – but but I was recruited mostly by some Division two schools, and, and, and I didn't – I was actually getting ready to go to junior college, and that's uh, – not because – I, I passed my classes, and, and I, I got my SAT score. And then Queens College recruited me. And, and one of the reasons why I went is because they were moving up to Division II. So I said, well, yeah, okay, I, I, I'll go to Queens College. And it was close to home. My parents, family could see me play. And I would tell you this. One thing I did get, I got a hell of an education at Queens College. Hey, those city, those CUNY universities, don't let anybody trip now. You can get a great education there. And I did get a great education there, so... It, it, it worked out for me in here. Yeah, I see it worked out because you wound up being a third leading scorer. How did it work out when you first came into the school? Did you set your precedence when you first got into the school, or was it a work in progress? Uh, no, I, it, when, when, when the guy, Don Lezak was our coach, he took over. When he took over, we had, like, no lot. We probably had, like, 10 freshmen on the team. So, so I started – as soon as I got there, and the thing that happened to me is when I was in, and when I was younger, I could really, really shoot. And when I was younger, I uh, I actually played with Mark, me and Mark Jackson grew up not too far from each other. So Mark and me used to play on the same bitty team. Wow. And believe it or not, I was the big guy, and Mark was like the small guy, you know what I'm saying? So he was playing the point. I was bigger than him at that time, you know, and then right. he was six four and I didn't grow anymore. So so but what happened was in football I broke my wrist. And when I broke my wrist, whatever happened in college in high school, I could not shoot the ball the same way. And wow. then it made me it made me become a point guard. So it made me become a facilitator, passing you know, on that type of stuff. So I played the point. And then it wasn't until my last year, senior year that my, my high school coach finally said, hey, man, I want you to shoot. I want you right. to shoot. Like, I had 25 against Jackson in that game because he let me go and shoot. So going into college, I felt like I got my mojo or whatever you can say. I got it back. And then I started shooting the ball. And then when I got to college, now when I got to college, we didn't have a three-point line until my senior year and that stuff. So, so but, but uh, I started from day one in college. Okay, okay. Did you guys play against Pete Edwards and those guys? Pete, Pete went to We did play New York Tech. We did play New York Tech, but Pete was already done by the time I got there. And, hey, let me put that out there, too. That was a bad dude, too. That was a bad motherfucker right there. Okay, excuse my language. That no, no, it's all good. Definitely. Pete, 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 we're talking Pete, about him a lot. Hey, Pete Edwards, that is one tough, 
dude, and that dude was a bad player, man. God, he was good. He was a really good player, man. Back in North Carolina. Hell of a defensive player, too. Hell of a defensive player. One of the best I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Hey, back in those days, New York Tech could have beat a lot of Division Ones. St. Thomas Aquinas could have beat a ton of Division Ones. They had Sue right. Carter. All those guys played for them. They were so good, man. Back in those days, you know, those guys could have killed Division One schools. Wow, True Carter, another one. Definitely. Hey, Listen, yeah, anybody know what's going on with True and BJ? I have them both. BJ's my guy, but definitely yeah. True is a legend. Yeah, BJ. Uh, uh, True, True had True had that uh, uh, hesitation that he catch you with that. Oh, but he was a bad man. True Carter was a bad man. Willie Allen was a bad was a bad man. You know. Vern, uh, uh, Vernon, um, uh, what's Vernon's last name from Jackson? Uh, Vern Moore? Yes. Vernon Moore? Those are the guys I kind of, they were a little older than me. I kind of looked up to, to those cats. Nice. Nice. So how did you guys do while you was at Queens College? We were, we had the most fun we ever had in college as freshmen, and we were 4 and 24. We were awful. Oh, wow. we had a butt kicked by everybody, all that stuff. But what happened was, which is, which is, which is good for me, is that our first year we were awful. We were all young. Our next year we won 12 games. Our next year we won 13 games. And then my last year we went to the championship game of the league, and we were 18 and 18 and nine. And, nice. and so, so you kind of, you know, we didn't get to the to the pinnacle. We got almost there to win. We played CW Post with uh, Glenn McMillan was on that team that beat us at yeah. CW Post. And yes. They had, they had some, they had the Hammond, you know, uh, 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 now Kurt, you know, Curtis, Curtis Hammond's my man too, smooth. Okay, but, okay, you know, okay. They had, Mike Hammond was playing at that time. Curtis was on wow. the And that's, uh, so they had some, they had a really good team. So in those days, New York colleges had, was, was loaded up with, wow. with talent. Like, it just kind of, like, disappeared, yeah. right? People had, no idea. Home. people had no idea. We used to go out. There used to be different tournaments. You had the Bello, and you had Citywide and all that stuff. And then, obviously, you had West 4th Street. And, and, you know, we played. I played with the Courtsmen, you know, at CCMY in the Pro League, the Pro-Am League. But also, there was a league out in Long Island. God, I'm, I'm forgetting the name right now. Out with Dr. J and Roosevelt. Okay, and, okay. And and we used to play out there. And I'm telling you, the games were off the hook. I mean, guys would come from Manhattan, Bronx, everything, Queens. And then Long Island had great teams, you know, with Ken Batten and all those guys and Curtis, Curtis Hammond, all those guys. So it was unbelievable. I mean, those games, back in those days, the park was a really nice park and they had like four courts. They'd have those games starting at 7 o'clock. You could have a game at 10 o'clock at night. And the park would be packed. Packed out there, bowling. Uh, I think uh, Rick said it's called Centennial Park. Centennial, exactly. Centennial. That was Thanks, it. Rick. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was that's great. Unbelievable. unbelievable. That's and great. if you couldn't ball, back in those days, just like at ISA now, if you couldn't ball, dudes would boo you like, yo, get him off. Get him out. They tell the folks to get you out. You couldn't even you stay you out there now. Out the court. Early. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you finished up Queens College. What did you do after school? I actually thought I was just going to be a school teacher. I went to school, got my secondary ed education uh, uh, degree, and then uh, uh, health and phys ed. And I thought I was going to be just a school teacher. So I got a job. Uh, I got a job at Archbishop Malloy High School, and I, I worked with a legend, Jack Kern. And But for me to get the job, the only way they would hire me was that I had to coach the freshman team, basketball. Oh, yeah, wow. I didn't really want to do it. And then I said, well, I got to get a job because I'm trying to get married and my wife. Right. So I said, okay, I'll do it. So I, I did it. Worked with Coach Curry, and I worked with the varsity team with Kenny Anderson and, and those guys. And, and, and my one of my first teams, I had a kid named Shandu McNeil who played for me. And and uh, uh, so I, played, I, I coached the freshman team there, and I was there for three years at Archbishop Malloy. And then I was up for tenure at the school. And it was kind of crazy because Jack Curran kept saying to me, you're going to get, you're going to get tenure. 
I was nervous because they had never given a black person tenure ever at Archbishop Malloy at that time. Wow. Never. Now, I don't know if they had many black teachers, but never had gotten tenure. And I'm up for it. And just as I was getting ready to go through my review, Queen mm -hmm. Collard calls and says, hey, my coach is going to resign that was there with me, and we want you to take over the job there, which meant a, a nice pay raise, which could help me get married and all other things. So then I left there, and I took the job at Queens College. Wow. How long did you stay there? I was at Queens College, I believe, for three, it was either three or four years. I, I can't remember exactly. We weren't any good. My last year that I was going to be there, we were finally going to be decent, I think. I think we had some transfers. And we're going to uh -huh. the things I learned really quick in coaching. First thing is, everybody says with coaching, hey, man, get as much talent as possible and you're going to be really good. Don't believe that. that. That's not true. You can get a lot of talented guys, but if they don't fit, it's never going to work. And I went and got every park legend guy that I knew that could ball my first year. And Queens College trying to get them in school. Half them cats didn't want to go to school. They didn't want to do this. And it did not work at all. We weren't any good. So then I went and I started getting more high school kids and, and trying to make it better. And we got better in time. At that time, though, we played in a league that had St. Rose, Philadelphia Textile, and they had uh, uh, CW Post. All three of those teams were ranked in the top 15 in America in Division II. Wow. Three. So we, 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 yeah, they, they, we were getting spanked. We were just trying to beat Adelphi and trying to beat, you know, Tack and trying to beat those guys because we would get killed by those other guys. So, so I stayed there. And one of the reasons why at, at Queens College I knew it was bad, we, we had a big summer camp. And in the summer camp, I go off and, and I played against our players back in those days. You know, I was there with the counselors, so the counselors versus the coaches. Yes. I played that game, and I was still kind of playing a little bit. Well, I ended up getting like 35 in the game. I mean, wow. I'm, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. And I, after the game, I'm feeling good. I'm like, yo, I crushed these guys. I still got it, you know, all this stuff. And then when I sat down and I started talking with my coaches, I said, oh, guys, you understand what just happened? And they said, what? They said, I said, at 29 or 30 years old, I just got 35 on our best players. We suck. Our team's awful. If I'm the best player and I'm coaching, we're awful. We're not any good at all. And wow. I, said, I don't know if we're going to be very good. So that's when I kind of realized that it's not all about talent. It's about chemistry, about having the right fits and, and those things. So. And then I left there, and I fortunately got the job at Old Roberts University. And, and mm. that, happened, that happened crazy. I, I tell people, that, and I won't stand too long, but I, I tell people this story about it. It's funny how life happens. I'm, I'm at Queens College. I'm kind of bummed out. I'm feeling like, man, I got to get out of here. They don't want to win. They don't want to put the money in the program. We need to improve. Come on, man. This is bad. Right. So then, all of a sudden, at the end of the year, before we start summer camp, I get a phone call. I get a phone call from a buddy of mine who coached at Oral Roberts with a guy named Bill Self. And he said, hang on, I'm leaving. But, hey, I think I can get you the job at Oral Roberts. And I said, first thing I said was, where is Oral Roberts? And he said, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I said, yo, dude, wow. I'm, from, I'm from Queens, New York. I am not right. going to know Tulsa, Oklahoma. Are you kidding me, man? So he said, no, listen, I'm telling you, he's a good guy. You know this guy, blah, 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 all this stuff. So I said, okay. So right after he called me, he says, the guy's going to call you tomorrow at 12 to talk to you. So I said, okay. So before that call happens, I get another phone call from a buddy of mine that's at St. Francis Prep High School, right down the road from Queens College. He's, he's, he's the AD. He calls me and he says, hey, Norm, I know you're not happy. Listen, I'm going to give you the best of both worlds. You could be the head coach at Queens College, and I'll give you a full-time tenure job here at St. Francis Prep High School. And I'll make sure you get off work every day by 2 o'clock 
so you can be to practice by 3.30 every day. Wow. You can have the best of both worlds. But hey, man, you got to let me know because I'm holding the job for you. This is all happening in one day, one day. Then I go to my AD and I tell him, hey, man, I'm going to talk to this guy about the job at all robbers. But my AD says, wait a second, don't do anything. So I call my dad and I say to my dad, hey, dad, they can't fire me for looking at a job. I see this shit on TV all the time. You can't fire me. He goes, no, 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 they can't fire you. You can't fire me. My AD comes back. He says, listen, I just spoke to the president of school here at Queens College. They said they'll pay you $10,000 more a year for you to wow. stay and not go. So I got these three offers in one day on my plate. So who do I go to? I go to my wife because she's the smartest person in our household. Smart so, move, smart I, move. Yes. So I go to her and I say, here's the, here's the three offers. I say, Queen College is going to give me $10,000 more. What do you think? She goes, is that going to move us out of this one bedroom and that TV screaming in the same room with us and that? I said, no. She goes, yeah, they're out. Forget that. So I said, okay. So then she said, now, St. Francis, that's different. You can coach, live your dream, but you can also have security. That one's pretty good. Let's wait. Then she says, let's wait for the phone call from the guy from All Rocks. I get on the phone. I'm talking to Bill Self for a while. My brother graduated from Kansas, from the University of Kansas, believe it or not. He picked the school and went there. My brother used to work basketball camp when Larry Brown was at Kansas. Mm. My brother used to bring me and my younger brother to Kansas to work the camp every summer for like three weeks. I used to wear all types of Kansas gear from Danny Manning and all those guys because I would train. I'd give them my work apart, I'd give them my gear, and they would give me their gear. Right. So Bill Self, when me and him got on the phone, he says to me, Norm, I know you. And I said, we know each other? He said, Norm, I was at basketball camp at the same time. You were. But he was hanging out with R.C. Buford and the coaches because he's two years older than me. He was hanging out with them. I was hanging out with Danny Manning, Cedric Hunter, Quinn Snyder. I was hanging out with the ballers. He said, we right. were in the same room. So we figured out we actually did know the same people and that stuff. So that's how it happened that I went to Oral Roberts and worked for him. And the crazy, wow. thing is, the crazy thing is we both end up at Kansas. We both end up at Kansas, which is crazy. Where my which is crazy. I'm living... I'm living my brother's dream every day. He graduated. He was a walk-on at Kansas. I'm living his dream every day as a coach at Kansas. Wow. That's and amazing. That's how life goes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You never know. That's yeah. crazy. That's such an amazing story. Yeah. 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 It's unbelievable, man. That's why when guys ask me, how do you get into business? I tell them, everybody has their own story. It's you that's right. To every person, it's unique to That's every right. person. I can tell you exactly how to how to get it. Wow! And now, since you've been involved with what almost twenty or more players that went to went to play professional basketball, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You had your hands in a lot of things and maturing and helping a lot of young guys mature to the next level. Uh, tell me how was that experience and how do you sit back and, and look back at what you did? I will tell you this, most of the guys that have made it are guys, and, and we still say this to this day when guys come in, you have to be a sponge. What happens with a lot of kids that hurts them is that they need to understand when you come into a program or you come into something new, know that you don't know. Know that you don't know. So, and that way, it allows you to learn. Like, Joel ended. I recruited Joel, and we bring him in, and we're thinking, Joel, you're going to be with us for two years. He's thinking he's going to be in college for four years. But wow. what Joel ended was, was a sponge. If you showed him something, he practice it, practice it, do it over and over. Okay, coach, I got you. You know what I'm saying? He was a sponge. Devontae Graham. A sponge. 
You know, Wayne Selden was a sponge to coach. They knew they didn't know, and those guys were able to get better and better. So if there's one thing I tell kids is just, just be a sponge. Just be a – no, you don't know. And when you do that, it opens up your mind to so many other things. Watch how much you will grow and how much you'll get better than other guys quickly. Wow. And, you know, you being a Queens guy, you, you spent some time coaching at St. John's. How was that? You know, uh, uh, it's amazing because I've actually gotten back in touch with a lot of my guys over the big, with this COVID going on. My wife's been on my butt that I should get more contact with them. And, you know, I talked to DJ Kennedy the other day, Malik Booth, uh, 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 Sean Evans. I talked to Paris Horn, uh, 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 kind of uh, Lamont Hamilton. You know, guys that guys that played for us, Geno Lawrence from Brooklyn. And, you know, the thing about St. John's is, and this is what's amazing, people thought the players we got, oh, they weren't very good. Let me tell you something. 80 to 90% of those players are still playing now for money. Wow. They're still playing now for money, those guys. And I, I'm so proud of them. Not only that they've been able to keep their careers going, but they've all, from what I've known, have become good men and good fathers and, and, and good husbands. And that's a, and it's really cool when I'm on the phone with them and, hey, coach, I just had my third kid. And, but, you know, we're talking. And I talked to DJ Kennedy the other day. and I said, DJ, he goes, yeah. He goes, I just had another a, a son. I just had a son, coach. And I said, man, is he going to be tough? I don't know, man. He goes, come on, coach. And I said, DJ, I recruited you. I came to Pittsburgh, recruited you, and I came to your house in the afternoon, and your mama was making pancakes for you, dude. She was making pancakes for you. And he started laughing and that stuff. But I had, I, had, I had a ton of fun with the players here, there. Those kids gave me everything they had. Uh, even though people would kind of second rate them and that stuff, they tried as hard as they possibly could. Uh, I did think that before I got let go, we were, you know, we were right on that verge. Like we had two years we were on the verge. You know, nobody talks about my last year. We go to the NIT and, and we end up playing Memphis at Memphis, okay? And, and and they beat us on a buzzer shot at wow. in front of 22,000 people. Our kids played their tails off. They played unbelievable. And, and, and we ended up losing that game. But people forget that during that year, we lost Hardy, who played, yeah. who played for us. And you know how good Hardy was. And, right. and he, missed, he missed six games, and we had won 17 games that year. So the next year, we knew we had everybody coming back. And the Big East had finally come down a little bit because we, when we were in it, it was at its peak. You know, I mean, you had the Louisville's, the Pittsburgh's, the Connecticut's. Everybody was really, really good. You know, you know, you tried to pick off a Notre Dame at those sets and try to beat teams. So we knew we were going to be really good the next year, but sometimes that happens. You know, and and they moved on, and and, and Coach Lavin. Did a great job with the guys, and, and they went to the NCAA tournament that next year, which was which was great, which was great for them. But those kids gave me everything, gave me everything. I actually talked to Little Mace, Anthony, oh, yeah? the other day, and he's doing good, and, and, and that stuff. So it was a tragedy, him losing his dad. Yeah, and definitely, was, definitely. You know. Yeah, man. That was, that was real tough. So out of all the players, uh, that you coached at St. John's, from what I hear, the majority of them graduated, and that's the key thing. I think, I think every single one graduated. Wow. Every single one graduated. Uh, Salute, Rob coach. Thomas, I appreciate that. Rob Thomas is probably the best story of any kid. I, I don't know if you remember who Rob was. Rob no. Thomas played, he played for me at, at St. John's, and, and it is a great story. Rob was getting ready to be like a legend in, in New York City basketball. Rob Thomas, I, I forgot the kid he played against that was in the NBA for a long time, but Rob Thomas played against him at ISA, 
And Rob Thomas was a 6'6", athletic, but a scoring beast. And Rob had like 45 on him. And everybody wanted Rob Thomas. Everybody wanted him. And then he goes up to prep school, and he ended up getting kind of heavy. And then he kind of fell off. And when he got on, you know, all those people that were patting him on the back, they left him. So we go up to recruit him at, at, uh, at the prep school. And we end up getting him. He comes to us. Rob Thomas has dyslexia, and he has severe learning disability. Okay? That guy did everything he could, and he graduated from St. John's. He wow. got his degree. And I talked to him the other day, and this makes me more happy about anything with our guys. As I talked to him the other day, and he said, I'm telling you, Coach, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you and Coach Quarterbaum, and Coach Casey, and Coach Breaker, and Coach Singleton, and that you guys cared about me. Because what happened to Rob when he got to us, he tore his knee twice. He was wow. never the same player. Now, he did help us beat Georgetown one time in the garden. He played unbelievable. But he tore his knee up, and we never gave up on that kid. And, and he, was, he said, I appreciate you guys every day. Now with what I'm doing, and that's um, he's got he's got two kids, and he's doing well working there in New York. He's he's a great kid, great kid. Well, that's that's one of the the pleasures of being a coach, right? Yeah, get help change a lot of people's lives. So definitely salute to you, coach. You know when I talk to my coach, uh, Bobby Hartstein, no matter how many times I talk to him, he keeps reminding me. Listen, the one thing I'm proud of that you guys turn out to be professionals and good people. And he just keeps repeating the same thing over and over. And then you kind of forget about that you even played for this guy. Right? You sweating, running up and down, yeah. but they yeah. care about you as people. So definitely, definitely. That was good, Coach. And All right. A, last he's two a, questions. He's a legend, too. Yes, thank you. I'll tell him you said that. Um, what do you think is the state of New York City basketball right now? Um, 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 it hurts me that it's not where it used to be. It hurts me. Uh, because even though I'm out here, hey, I'm still in New York. I don't brag about New York. I don't care what nobody says. I, I, got, guys, right. I got guys on our staff from Chicago and Peoria and California. I'm like... Come on, dude. I don't. I, I don't care what you say. There's my, hey, I, Ed Pickney to stop it. Walt Berry, stop it. Chris Mullins. Stop it. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> so, so, but I, I, what's happened is for some reason it's not. And I don't know. It's because kids don't play in the park no more. I don't know if it, it, it's it's because things now. If and I do think this has happened a little bit with young people. If, if things didn't work out for you and you didn't play as a freshman or, or things didn't happen for you right away, you were probably told at home, uh, work harder, try harder, you got to be better, whatever. I think what happens a little bit now is, oh, okay, it must be the coach's fault or the situation, hey, get out of there, go somewhere else. And we kind of jumped and, instead of trying to persevere through some stuff. Right. I, I also think a lot of it's probably happened because of the lack of funding in New York City. You know, I I, I grew up in an area where, where Springfield Gardens, we, we had basketball, we had football, you had baseball, you had all the sports, but you also had, a, we had a thing called performing arts. And, and, and so kids would be singing and dancing and doing plays and stuff like that. So you'd have all you know, you have all these activities for kids to do to express themselves and to grow. And I think because of funding has gone and that I think it's really hurt. And I think sometimes you got guys that are coaching that are not really coaches or thinking about it as coaches and they're just out there kind of supervising the kids rather than coaching. Because Back in our day, which was different, and this would crack me up. How can the same four, five, six different schools be in the city championship or be 
winning it all the time. Now, I know you got talent, but back in my day, there was eight really good schools in Queens. There were yeah. eight really good schools in Brooklyn. There was eight really good schools in Manhattan. Great, eight really good schools in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? You had to come through a war to get through that and, and to see how it's happened. I But I think a lot of it goes with funding and probably the lack of guys being there to coach the way they were. You know, you lost a lot of legends now. And you yeah. Legends yeah. coaching through through retirement, through through death, whatever. You lost a lot of a lot of guys. But then there now you got guys like myself. I coach at Martin De Porres, uh, which is more charter school. But you know you got Rob Phelps, Coach Will Jackson, uh, Bud from Jefferson. You got uh, Chris Wynn from St. Ray's. Uh, you know, the boys and girls high coach, right? Lovely. And a lot of us came up under those great coaches. Yep. So I think the problem, you know, I, I don't know what the problem is, but I know now that we you got a lot of my peers and people came up watching those generations who came before us, we're in position now to do something better. That's what I want to say. The problem is, too, is, remember, if there was good players in the Springfield Gardens area, they went to Springfield. You would get those kids. Now the kids are either going down. Because prep schools back in our day was, man, if everything all else failed, go to prep school. If all else failed. Now you're losing those guys. I used to say this at St. John's. Guys used to say, no, you got to keep the New York kids home. And I used to tell some high school guys, you can't keep them home. <laughs> they going from you, fam. I mean, you can't get mad at me, fam. They, they going from you. You can't keep them. You know? So, right. And, and I think that's hurt quite a bit because, you know, back in the day, if you were in Brooklyn, you wanted to play at Alexander Hamilton. Or if you didn't play there and you wanted to go to, uh, go to private school, you were going to play at Lachlan. That's where you was going to go. You know what I'm saying? Christ the King right. was always been good. But, you know, Christ the but. There was also enough players to go around that you could have a Willie Dersh and a couple of good players go to Holy Cross, and they could be good. And then Archbishop Malloy would get Kenny Smith and those guys, but they could still have Khalid Reeves and those guys. That you know, there was there was just I, I think it was just more players. The thing that's crazy is you wouldn't believe this. Places like North Carolina and Florida have exploded exploded with players. It's, I mean, there, there's at least, in North Carolina right now, in this class, there's at least 25 Division One dudes. Wow. I mean, at least 25 dudes now at different levels, and but 25 Division One dudes. Hey, back in our day when we played, there was at least that just in the city. Yes. Just in the city. What are you talking about Long Island? And I said, that's just in the city. Right. It's it, it's changed. I, I don't know if kids are moving more to, you know, to down south or whatever, or, or getting out of the city. But it's it's just different. I think. Well, definitely uh, appreciate your perspective. <clears throat> so we have this last part of the show where we like to ask who you like to nominate, and you already said it out tomorrow. So I, I, I'm gonna reiterate this for you. Uh, we would love to have Richie Radar Anderson on the show. Uh, okay. It would be a pleasure. To have them on the platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll get and anybody else who think that you know that will come and share some of their stories about New York City basketball, because um, I just want to be in the forefront of helping reshape what's what's going on right now. And I I thought the way to start it was to start back right because it's basically a high school basketball podcast. Yeah. Right. So I told my partner I didn't want to start with. The new guys first. I wanted to go back and do the history first, and then we could come up. Yeah, and kind and of rebuild it, from that way. The one thing, and, and we're all old. Well, I'm an old timer now, and that stuff. But you know, when you used to sit in the backyard and have the barbecues with the family, and everybody used to talk about the old times, and you used to be like, "Look at these old heads just talking about the old times." Well, I'm that old head now, talking about right. the old times, and 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 I'm just telling you, basketball in New York. In the 70s and the 80s and early 90s, wasn't nothing like it. Man. Yeah, wasn't nothing like it. You know, it was it was unbelievable the amount of 
Kind of like, I, I can't believe there hasn't been yet another, and there probably will be, but like another Stefan Marbury. I mean, that, that, that guy was ridiculous. Like, when you watched him play, you knew that guy was different, man. He was different, you know? So At 10 years old, I knew he was different. Yep. Yep. So, so it hopefully, you know, things, things go in cycles. And maybe maybe it can change around and, and that stuff because I love to see New York get back. But you know you do have. I will tell you this. And I'll, and all right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Last door, coach. We are gonna come back for the short session because we're talking about to run out. All right, come back. <laughs> that's you, coach. Hey, that's sweet, man. All right, hold up. Here we go. Hey, that's nice, man. Yeah, that's what my guy does every show. Hey, can I get that? Oh, it's coming to you for sure, uh, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> nice. Say, yo, no, no. When we, you know, when we finish doing what we're doing, uh -huh. and we frame it up, I'll hit you up, and we'll definitely send it to you. Thank you. Hey, what I was going to tell you is there are there are guys that are I think are doing a great job, and it's me that not not trying to be Mister Promoter, but you know Munch and their program and that stuff with the PSA Cardinals and that stuff, Shandu McNeil and what they do with the Lightning and those guys. You know, they're all doing. You know, the New York Jayhawks. So I, I will tell you this. When New York players leave and they play an AAU ball around the country, they well represented now. They ball they ball out. They ball out. We may they may not have as many stars as what they once had, but they do ball out now. And I am proud of that every time I go to events. Every time. Definitely. Definitely. I had John on the one the other night and he's one of the coaches with a Long Island Lightning. And uh, he wanted to say what's up to you as well. But he, he, he said the same thing, that they, they got out there, they're doing the blue-collar work. You know, yeah. they're not doing the, the whole showboat and big-name guys, but they're making sure that all these guys go to college. So I think that's important. They do. They do, they do a great job in, in, of that. And, and I think now it's become, it's become different in that those guys are looking for those guys and getting them to understand that everybody's not going to play at Kansas. Or do, but that doesn't mean you can't have a great college career where you go and play. And I think they've done a great job with them with that. Definitely. Definitely. So any last uh, words you'd like to uh, say to our audience before we leave and get out of here? Well, I, I, I would just say I really appreciate you letting me come on. And, and anything I can do to help, just let me know. I always want to give back to New York. That's always going to be my spot. That's where I'm from. No matter where I live, I'm a New Yorker at heart. Never change. And and uh, uh, and I'm also no matter where I go, I'm always proud to be from New York. Definitely. So I just found out another thing by Rick. He said that you and I had the same coach. Who? Coach Gil Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> Come on Gil now, Gil Reynolds. Come on. Hey. Yeah. That, tell me. Hey. Tell me something about Coach Gil Reynolds, the legendary Coach Gil Reynolds. That was. I'm going to try to say it in the right way. That was the meanest, toughest, good man That's right. I had ever been around. I'm telling you, that guy put fear in your heart. You know, I mean, I was on a train one time, and he got on. I got off. It wasn't even my stop. I got off because I knew the dude was going to be mad at me because I told him I couldn't play with him no more. But wow. He, 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 but he's also, man, I took a trip with him. We, we, it was, John Sally was supposed to go with us, but he didn't. Lorenzo Charles and those guys did go with us. And, and me and a guy named Donald Pugh, we were the only two guys from Queens on the team. And he took us to Detroit to play in St. Cecilia's kind of tournament or whatever. And we drove wow. down there. And when we drove down there, my mom and dad, we, 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 we didn't have a whole lot of money because I got a lot of brothers and sisters. My mom was a nurse. My dad was a cop. And so they gave me some money. But I was trying to hoard my money. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, it got to last me the whole weekend, you know, and that type of stuff. So I'm sitting there. So we stop off like at a McDonald's. 
and I'm sitting there, and all the guys get off, you know, to go get something to eat. And I stayed on the bus. And I can hear him talking. You would notice. Roberts. He was like, Roberts. You know, talk like that. Roberts. And he's, I'm like, yeah, Coach. He's like, come in. So I come to the front of the bus. It's just him and the bus driver. He goes, how can you go get something to eat? You not hungry? What are you talking about? We got a bus. I said, no, I'm okay. He said. So he pulls out like $10 or whatever, gives it to me, and says, go get something to eat. And give me, give me a hamburger. Give me a hamburger. You go get something to eat. He was that type of guy. Now, he's also the type of guy that would smack you dead in the face if you did not do what you were supposed to in front of your mama and your daddy. I saw him one time. The guy's name, he may come on your show. It was a guy named Damian Nat. Damian Nat. He played with us. And he played at like printing or something like that. So we're in that small gym, not at, by New Lots Avenue. We used to yes. play, play down there. Okay, so he mm -hmm. goes and we're in a small gym and he was trying to tell him something and either Damien and another kid were kind of laughing, you know, paying no attention. So he says to the guy, give me the ball. And he takes a ball and he says, Damien. And as soon as he turned around, he threw the ball as hard as he could. Hit him dead in the face. And, and the guy's bleeding. He's bleeding. And he goes like this. Now, this is what I want you to do. I ain't worried about you being upset, upset because I know jujitsu, karate, everything else, and I street fight. So I'll beat your ass. And he says to him, go wash your face off and get your butt back out here. You know, the dude went wash his face off and got his butt back out. Wow. It was it was unbelievable how 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 that how that guy was. See he but he helped a lot of people. Definitely. And his main Definitely. guy was Lorenzo Charles. Wow. Because he used to take Lorenzo down to Longburn. Yes, definitely. Let's go. Yeah. And Lorenzo Charles was his main guy. He pissed off Lorenzo one time in practice because Lorenzo kept, like, dunking it, but, like, not dunking it hard. And he goes, if you're not going to rip the rim down, stop dunking it, like yelling at him to shoot shots. And I watched Lorenzo jump up there and dunk it, and then he just stayed on the rim trying to break the rim because because the kid was yelling at him. That's that's just how that's just how good was. He he oh man he, he's he's a legend now. He's a, and I saw him cuss at shit green, tiny green. It didn't matter who it was. He 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 do whatever. But he gets you Bernard like, oh, King, man. Albert King. He had them all. And he tell you. Oh shit! I'll smack Albert right in the face. Okay, I got like a baby. You know what I'm saying? You <laughs> this guy. Listen, <laughs> yo. As soon as you were saying how he threw the ball in the guy's face, my boy Pat Alfon said he will punch you in the chest and tell you to go home and get your dad. <laughs> yes. Hey, I'm telling you, only because John Sally would hear this, I'm not going to tell you what he said to John Sally. Because what he said to John Sally when Sally said he couldn't go on the trip to Detroit because he was going to play in like the Empire State Games or some shit, you know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And Gil went off, and what he said was, I, I, I can't say it, I can't say it because it would be bad. But I was like, oh, my God. And I don't think Sally played with him that year. Sally got wow. pissed at him. He was like, I cannot believe you talk to me like that. And, and I was like, this guy is off the hook. You know, so, but I played for him for one summer. And then I played against him. Before I played for him, I played against him. And I go up, and there was a guy named, I think it's Derek McCray. It yes. Derek McCray. And, Derek and, McCready, and, no, and, yes, maybe, yeah. And he's a good, he was a good dude, but he was a point guard for him. So I'm scoring quite a bit against him. <laughs> this dude says, in, in the bellow, he yells out, Next time he goes to the basket, upend his ass. <laughs> and he didn't realize my dad was sitting on the top deal because the park was packed. And my dad's a New York City detective for 30 years. <laughs> so my dad yells down to the kid. He goes, if you upend my son, I'm going to come out there and beat your ass. You do that. And then he yells to Gil. He goes, hey. And if he does it, I'm going to come down there and beat you like that to Gil. And then how about this? The next summer, I played for Gil. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my dad 
that guy's yeah, 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 that guy's a tough guy. You see, go play for him. Look at that. It's unbelievable. But that's how it was back in the day. There was some tough love. That was yeah. Bad. But I would tell you, meanest, toughest, but really good guy that tried to help kids and try to steer them the right way. Yes. Yeah, thank good you. Man. Good man. Appreciate good man. that. Well, thank you, Coach, for sharing Thanks. your time with us. Uh, you have some amazing stories. Uh, hopefully sometime in the future you can come back, maybe if, when you're writing a book or something like that. Uh, <laughs> but definitely spread the word. Uh, thanks for the love and appreciate having you, man. And good luck this year. No problem. And hey, I'll hit you. I'll hit you, Richard's uh, 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 radar's number. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll send I appreciate that. that. All right.